Have you heard Jesus silence the critics? In this lesson, we will learn about the miraculous moment that Jesus heals on the Sabbath. Happy Sunday and have a blessed Patriots Day. Are you missing your Sunday school? Would you like to be part of our Sunday school? Then join our Sunday school sale group, SSCG. We're almost at the 2000 mark. I'm excited. Y'all keep subscribing. We get, we're getting there. And the winner will get two, we'll give away two t-shirts. Now, uh, I, I asked how many of you all were Sunday school teachers and a lot of y'all answer me. How many of you would like to be, would like to be in a training, a free training on how I put my Sunday school lesson together? And just put it below this, this video in the comment section. And I'll, I'll try to remember to put a question down there. But I just want to know if you'd be interested in a, a Zoom or a YouTube. Leave it in the comments, Zoom or YouTube. Hi, I'm Regina Dean Reed and I teach Sunday school at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church in Maven, Mississippi. Now, let's get into this lesson. Today's lesson is Jesus silences critics. Our devotional reading is Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 10. And our background scripture is Luke, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 6. And our key verse is Luke, the 14th chapter, verses 3 through 4. Today's date is September 10th, 2023. Let's start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, you have shown us great mercy, just as you have shown mercy to your people throughout history. We want to be people marked by lives of mercy. Heal us from spiritual ailments that cause us to act in unloving ways. Grant us deeper awareness of the needs of our neighbors so that we might show love and mercy. Help us be merciful, just as you are merciful. In the name of your son, Jesus, amen. Lesson aims. One, identify the Sabbath law at issue. Two, contrast the viewpoint of the Pharisees with the viewpoint of Jesus. And three, suggest why the lesson's passage is or should be relevant to you. Lesson introduction. As attendees at the memorial service for Dorothy Day, 1897 through 1980, listened to the sermon, they were reminded of the following quote from her writing. You love God just as much as the one you love least. This quote was her way of paraphrasing Jesus' command in Luke, the 10th chapter, verses 25 through 37, to love God and show love and mercy to others. The minister giving the sermon went on to describe how this quote anchored Dorothy's life and work. Demonstrations of mercy, love, and justice have been the tenets of the Catholic Workers Movement, established by Dorothy and others in the 1930s. The movement consists of over 200 communities, houses, and 14 countries. Each house works to show hospitality and mercy to the most vulnerable members of their city. This work is done through their feeding of the hungry, tending to the sick, and providing stable housing for the unhoused. God's desire that people love him and love their neighbors. People can demonstrate such love toward others through acts of mercy. In doing so, God's people follow Jesus' command to be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. This is Luke, the sixth chapter, and the 36th verse. This lesson scripture reveals how Jesus responded to a group of people who wanted to add boundaries and limitations to acts of mercy. Lesson context. This lesson depicts the third occasion in Luke's gospel that Jesus shared a meal with the Pharisees. All three interactions share a common pattern of events. First, a Pharisee invited Jesus to join the meal. Second, a tense moment between Jesus and the host led to a conversation regarding issues of religious observances. Third, Jesus used the opportunity to instruct those in attendance 
on issues regarding how to follow God. In doing so, Jesus taught his fellow God. In doing so, Jesus taught his fellow diners to act merciful in their dealings with other people. The issue of doing work on the Sabbath is the primary concern of Luke's 14th chapter, verses 1 through 6. Today's scripture, the Jewish Sabbath was established based on the day that God rested after six days of creation. As a result, the people were to cease work on the Sabbath. And such requirements regarding that day were a sign of holiness between God and his people. This is found in Exodus, the 31st chapter, verses 12 through 17. As the ancient Israelites left Egypt, they were commanded to take certain steps to prepare for Sabbath observances. Later, as the people entered the promised land, the law of Moses provided further descriptions regarding proper observances of the Sabbath. Defiance of these commands brought harsh consequences to the people. The Israelites understood the Sabbath to be a delight and a day of worship. Even certain psalms were to be sung on that day. By the first century AD, certain expectations regarding proper adherence of the Sabbath had been established by the Jewish religious leaders. In the time between the Testaments of Oral Tradition, later codified as the Mishnah, with rabbinic law, attempted to define the rules regarding proper Sabbath observance. These included nuanced definition of work, as well as complex regulations regarding what was allowed and disallowed on the Sabbath. Such intricacies made it challenging for most first century Jews to accurately interpret how they should observe the Sabbath. Jesus never disputed the importance of the Sabbath. His high regard for it can be seen in his habit of teaching in synagogues on the Sabbath. Further, he was willing to use the day to show mercy towards suffering people. As the Lord of the Sabbath, Jesus demonstrated the true intent of the Sabbath to remind God's people of his mercy. The day was not to be a religious burden or an excuse to limit work of love and mercy. Lesson scriptures. Luke, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 6. Verse 1. And it came to pass as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day, that they watched him. Now on that day, while Jesus was having a meal at the Pharisee's house, a lot of people were there too. And these people were watching Jesus closely because they wanted to learn from him and hear what he had to say. This verse is a simple introduction to a story that follows. It tells us that Jesus was spending time with different kinds of people, like the Pharisees, who were important religious figures and regular people who were curious about his teaching. It shows us that Jesus cared about everyone and was willing to share his wisdom with anyone who wanted to learn. Verse 2, And behold, there was a certain man before him with the dropsy. In this verse, there was a man who had a problem with his body. His body was swollen or bloated. He had a condition that made his body hold on to extra fluid and this caused his body to puff up. The Pharisees and religious leaders were watching closely to see how Jesus would react to this situation. It's like Jesus was asking them a question. Even without words, he wanted to see if they would judge him for having his condition or if they would show kindness and care. The verse doesn't tell us exactly how they reacted but it sets the stage for a lesson that Jesus was about to teach them. So this verse is showing us how Jesus used real life situations to teach important lessons about compassion and how we should treat others, no matter what they look like or what challenges they face. Verse three, and Jesus answering spake unto the lawyers and Pharisees saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? In this verse, Jesus asked the religious leaders and experts in the law a question. He asked them if it was okay to heal someone on the Sabbath day. 
which was a special day of rest and worship for them. The Sabbath was a day when people weren't supposed to do regular work. Jesus wanted to see what these leaders thought about helping someone who was sick or hurt on this special day. He was testing if they understood the real purpose of the Sabbath, which is to show love, care, kindness to others, even if it means breaking some of the strict rules. So this verse is all about Jesus teaching us that showing love and helping people in need is more important than sticking to rules that might prevent us from doing good things, especially when it comes to showing compassion. Verse 4, And they held their peace, and he took him and healed him and let him go. And the Pharisees and the lawyers were speechless and unable to answer Jesus' question. The phrase held their peace does not mean that the religious leaders agreed with Jesus or were peaceful regarding Jesus' words or actions. Rather, they avoided confronting Jesus at this particular moment. Jesus let the sick man go, thus freeing him from his physical suffering. This healing is similar to another healing that Jesus did on the Sabbath. On that occasion, Jesus healed a woman and declared her free from her bondage. Verse 5, And answered them, saying, Which of you shall have an ass or an ox fallen into a pit and will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day? The law of Moses required that people help lost or injured livestock of neighbors and enemies alike. An attitude of mercy, even to livestock, was at the heart of these commands. Strict interpretations allow the animal's owner to feed the animal and ensure its survival until the end of the Sabbath day. Freeing the animal, however, was not allowed. In this interpretation, the work of freeing the animal broke the command to do no work on the Sabbath. He, Jesus, was trying to help them understand that if they cared about their animals and their enemies' animals, they would do whatever it took to help them, even on the Sabbath. This would be more important to them than following the strict rules about not working on that day. So this verse shows us that caring for others is really important and it's okay to do things that might seem against the rules to help someone in need. Jesus was teaching the Pharisees that love and compassion should come first. Verse 6, And they could not answer him again to these things. For the second time during the meal, the Pharisees were left speechless. Their refusal to answer might have indicated their collective humiliation and shame regarding human silence and shame in response to God's work. See Ezekiel, the 16th chapter in the 63rd verse. This tense interaction likely contributed to later hostility that the Pharisees would demonstrate toward Jesus. These things refer to all that Jesus had done and implied. And these are our questions. One, how can we ask questions to make sure you're doing the right things to help others understand your beliefs? Two, how can an unhealthy focus on human traditions lead a person to fail to show mercy? Three, how can someone who believes in God decide when it's okay to stay quiet and when it's better to talk about the good things God is doing. Conclusion. The emphasis of the story is not on the ailing man. Instead, this story at its heart is a caution against focusing on religious practices at the expense of showing mercy. Jesus was not trying to nullify the Pharisees' practice of observing Sabbath. Not only did the Sabbath require a pause on work, but it also provided time for people to consider how they could show mercy to others. Further, the question of whether or not a person could heal on the Sabbath was an obscure point. Most people are unable to heal another person on any day of the week. Only the one who is the Lord of the Sabbath, see Luke chapter 6 verse 5, has the ability to heal on the Sabbath. Sometimes we unintentionally limit our expectations of what God ought to do? What are some traditions we hold to that perpetuates this? God's work is not limited by human expectations. 
We are to trust God and his timing of his work. When we exercise faith by trusting him in this way, we commit our lives of mercy, following the ways of our Heavenly Father. 20th century Jewish scholar Abraham Joshua Herschel, 1907 to 1972, describes the Sabbath as being an expression of holiness based in time. Although Christians today are not required to observe the Jewish Sabbath, we can still apply similar principles. The idea of observing specific time in order to show mercy to others meets a vital spiritual need for Christians. Followers of Jesus should desire to show mercy in sustained and tangible ways. Although we may sometimes get tunnel vision and focus on other parts of our busy lives, we must remember to keep mercy at the forefront of our minds, regardless of the situation. And our thought to remember, remember the Lord in the Sabbath and live accordingly. And if you have enjoyed this lesson, give us a thumbs up. Share this lesson. Get into a Bible study group if you're not in one, in person or online. Stay six feet apart. Love each other. Pray for each other. And I will see you all next week.